Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel and in today's video I am going to be doing a video that was highly, highly, highly requested from you guys. I say that every time I do a sit down video, but anytime I do a sit down video is usually something that you guys have been requesting over and over and over. If you have recently been watching my videos, then you know that I rarely do sit down videos anymore. I'm usually just vlogging and giving you guys little inside scoops of my life. But today we are going to be doing a sit down video. I am going to be giving you guys a how I edit my Instagram pictures. You guys have been wanting to know about this for years. Like I kid you not, years literally. I've never done this video on my channel so this is not an updated version or anything of the sort. This is what I am doing at this very moment. Let me go ahead and put my phone on do not disturb because we don't need to be disturbed at this moment. So you guys, basically for this video, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a list of all the apps that you need. I use literally only two apps and that is Facetune and Fisco. Let me just So first I'm going to start with the face picture and for the face picture we are first going to be starting on Facetune and any pictures that I'm about to edit and upload to my main account we always use Facetune first. So I'm going to go to Facetune and find the picture that I put in the album. Boom, this is the one we're going to edit. So what I like to do is I like to start off with the retouch. Retouch is what we start off with. And that's just basically to get into the face. Get into the face. And as you guys can see, we have some stuff that we could totally fix. First, you need the heel tool. The heel tool is like probably so, so important. And when I first started editing my photos, I knew nothing about the heel tool. I just stuck to like smoothing and things of the sort. That's where a lot of people go wrong is when you get these apps, you just think, oh, I'm just gonna smooth out my face. Yeah, we're just gonna look very, very smooth. And that's really not the goal when it comes to editing your pictures. You still want it to look very raw. So I get it. And zoom in, first thing you notice when you look at this picture is my smile lines. And you guys know how I feel about my smile lines. I hate them, so we're going to take them away. So yeah, this is what we do. Heel tool, it's gone. You know, it's gone. It's literally gone. This little eraser here is basically if you like heal something and it doesn't look smooth or it doesn't look, the finish wasn't very nice, then you can just erase it. You don't have to like X out and start all the way over. So I just basically heal anything that is kind of out of place any like harsh lines like on my nose right here i'll like do that right here underneath my eyes i'll use the heel tool now as you can see it looks very nice but it doesn't do too much you know what i'm saying it's like the perfect amount of edit right here above my brow we can clean that up a bit I'm going to use the eraser a bit right here because I feel like it's a little too smooth around my nose. It doesn't look like I have an arch. <laughs> so yeah, maybe something like that. You can get as close as you like. And yeah, I feel like that's okay. I feel like I would probably do it on my lips a little bit just to kind of smooth out the harsh line between my lip liner and my lip gloss. It's just like small little details. And then we go to the smooth tool. I'm moving too fast, y'all. I'm a professional editor. Once you have healed everything, I do smooth out. I do very light smoothing, especially like a picture like this where my makeup doesn't look bad at all so I don't have to smooth out too much. So I'm not gonna over smooth, you know what I'm saying? I just do like, like a harsh little run over my face with the smooth. And I feel like that is literally good enough. This is basically... What we have so far as you guys can see face is looking very flawless very even i would say not as many harsh lines and it just looks it just looks really good like i beat the heck out of my face which i did we just had to fix a few things <laughs> next 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 is the reshape reshape is basically for anything that i want to like fix the shape fix the way it's looking then i would do that so um First thing that I see is that I want to fix my hair. So what I would do is zoom in on my hair right here. And this, this is kind of bothering me. So what I would do is basically just reshape and just kind of like bring it down. You just really have to be very cautious. That's why I like to zoom in and just really make sure nothing looks kind of off. We can probably bring this down a bit. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, yep, all that good stuff like that. Make sure this thing right here isn't leaning. So, to like, if I do see it starting to lean, you just go to restore and just like exit out. Get really close if you would like. If you do still want this hair to be pulled down, but you just want to make sure that's not leaning, just get as close as possible and reshape if you need to. I mean, restore if you need to. I feel like I want to go to eyes now. So, on Facetune, you have this eyes feature. And what I want to do with this one is basically just kind of make my eyes a bit brighter. I feel like in this photo, my eyes are coming off a bit more red. So, um, white, whiten is what I use. And then, as you guys can see, it just kind of brightens my eyes up. I kind of sometimes do iris, depends on how I'm feeling. And then details as well. It just, details in the pupil just make them a little bit more evident. Depends on how you want the picture to look, but you know. I feel like that just helped a lot as far as the whiting goes. I'm all about color and if you guys have checked out my feed on Instagram then you know all of my pictures are very vibrant, very saturated, very even and I feel like that's just so important when it comes to you know getting your pictures right. So what I like to do is paint and um, I zoom in my face because you know really we're really working on the face right now. So what I can tell is that my makeup is a bit more white more pale around my mouth so what i would do is i go to picker and i just basically choose a color on my face that i am liking which is probably something around here it's a bit more you know warm so i'll find that and then i go to tone sometimes which i'm not sure what i'm about to do right now but let's see what tone does and if that's what i'm trying to go for so tone possibly so you can tone it but what will really help is skin and then as you can see when you put that skin on there it makes it a lot more vibrant but you can play with it you don't it doesn't have to be all the way up so I would go probably about here with the skin and the skin just basically just gave me you can really see the difference it gave me that brightness a bit more color on my cheeks it's a bit more orangey you can go in with that as well and yeah you can do classic so classic with this orangey to still give it some orange it can have a little bit more like that's like perfect I would say and then let me X that out I accidentally put some on my hair but yeah so that just basically fix that paleness around the mouth that you guys I'm sure can probably see this is the before and this is the after so it looks a lot better and I feel like that's all I need to fix as far as that goes. We can go to the uh, edit. It's pretty much the final step to when it comes to me using my Facetune app. Once I edit it, which means like I'm going to bring some color into it, get the like color that I kind of want, then that's like the final step. So we go to edit. So when I'm editing my pictures on this part, I kind of just wing it. Whatever like color I feel like looks the best with this photo, that's what I would do. This photo definitely needs a bit more orange, more color, more saturation to it. So that's what I would do. So usually I don't brightness right away. I usually start with contrast and I'm just going to play around with it. I can't really give you guys a set way to do this part. It just all depends on how you want the photo to look. Like I've said a million times already, I go for saturation, color, golden hour. Like I'm a brown girl. So I want to make sure I'm looking brown and warm in my photos. This part right here is really like a step to what I do to make my pictures very crisp. You guys are always saying, how do your pictures come out so clear? So clear. This is one of those steps. I do a lot of sharpening and contrast to make things just like very like sharp. I don't know. See, I'm going to start with contrast and contrast does make your pictures sharp, I would say. So I do some contrast, and as you can see, contrast makes it dark, 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 dark. And I have one black clothing, black hair, and it's black in the back. So one thing you want to make sure is that these blacks are looking very black, like, you know? So we're going to contrast, I go about, I'm feeling 10, it's really good. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of before and after action every time I do a few things. So this is the before, after, as you guys can see the blacks in here are starting to look a lot darker color we need color color is my best friend when i'm editing 
color bring some saturation into this photo I go about here because you also have the saturation tool and the temperature tool so I don't like to put all the color using the color tool so I go about mm, what are we filming right now I feel like I feel like eight is okay for color so we have a little bit of color sharpen I wing it also you don't want you don't want your picture to be like this that's scary but you do want it to be sharp and I don't go overboard with sharp I usually go about five I don't think I've ever went over like 10 when it comes to sharpening because no that's too much but about four is good when it comes to the sharpening tool so light I bring this up a tiny bit just to brighten it and then especially with a photo like this like I said we have a lot of black in it so what I would do is the shadows need to go down a lot because shadows on black doesn't make it look very black so shadows really far down as you guys can see that just looks so good on all the black bring the shadow very far down and it also turns some of that light down that i added but you know the picture is still bright so this is the before here's what we're working with now as you guys can see the picture just is starting to look really really well so um highlight i'm not sure what i did I feel like with this photo, I probably brought the highlight up. So I'm gonna bring the highlight up and then just a little bit. I'm not really sure what it's gonna look like, but now we're getting into the saturation and this is where the color comes at. So I feel like seven with saturation, that's good. It's color, this picture is definitely a lot more golden. My makeup is looking very golden and pretty and orange. And that's what we want here's a before here's after so um structure i also use structure most times it really depends on the picture but most times i do bring the structure up because structure makes your picture sharper if the structure is very sharp you know so structure this is what structure does as you guys can see it makes it very sharp if you have little structure your picture is very smooth and I feel like structure also just makes your picture look very real and natural. If you bring the structure down, your picture kind of looks very smooth. And I don't really like a smooth picture. I don't feel like a smooth picture gives authentic. It looks like you edited and it made it very smooth. So no, I bring the structure up most times. Not too much because you don't want your face and your makeup to look very like, you know, so you can see every little nook and cranny but just enough to where it's still sharpening the photo and then temperature for this picture bring it up i would say i feel like this picture does have a blue tone to it but i feel like my visco did that more than the um, face tune so i am still going to bring this up a bit probably around five feel like five and then for the vignette i'm not sure if that's how you say it for a photo like this where i am wearing black i most likely brought it up so it could kind of tone out some of the shadow in the back so you can go back to the brightness and bring that up just a smudge i went up six with the brightness and uh i feel like that looks good like this photo is starting to look really well so I'm done. That's all I'm going to do when it comes to editing. But as you guys can see, the edit tool is a really, really important tool. Whenever I want my lips to look a bit more nude in a photo, I will just, um, you know, put the nude on there. So now we're going to put the nude with the skin tool or the um, tone tool. It just kind of depends on whichever one I choose. But um, using the skin tool, I feel like that's good. I'm going to go to Picker and choose my um, lip liner and we're going to fix that up a bit and I usually just use paint for this as you guys can see. This is like some very hardcore stuff so like honestly you guys can follow this video to your advantage. Some people are probably like girl I don't need to know all of this stuff but I'm just giving you guys every little detail so yeah. Fixed my lip liner a bit like that looks very nice boom there we go so after i do that that is pretty much all i would do to this photo when it comes to um facetune so we're gonna save that 
this is the after this was the before this is the after before after before after and it looks good so basically when i get to the visco part of editing my pictures i usually just like find one of the filters that i already have saved i use the visco trial i do have the monthly fee for visco because um, I had to pay for it to get the filter that I enjoyed. The filter that I really like on Visco, which is pretty much in every edit that I have pre-saved, is the AL3 filter. The AL3 filter is this very, like, orangey filter. Of course, I have my own, so I have, like, the AL3 filter with exposure, with saturation, with temp, a lot of other things added to it, but all of them have some AL3 in it. If you do want to, you know, follow this visco part, then I would recommend you maybe think about getting the trial so you can get the AL3 filter. So with that being said, I do have a bunch, a bunch, a ton, a ton, a ton of filters that I have pre-saved. And what that means is that I take a filter, I change it up a bit, and then I save it after I put it onto a photo. This is what I mean when I say my own. It has this little thing right here because these are filters that I've pre that I've saved. As you guys can see, I have many tons and tons and tons. Obviously, when I'm doing a picture nowadays, I'm not scrolling all the way down here to get one of those filters. No. If anything, I any filters that I'm using recently, I just like start with whatever I have down here. We're going to go with this first one. I feel like it looks good. It looks nice. I like how it looks on the photo. So the edits for this one are AO3, which is the fluorescent soften. And then I put some exposure, we put some contrast, white balance. We already saturated, we already contrast, we already brighten the picture up on Facetune, but I do it over again. So yeah, I basically double edit my picture when it comes to lighting and the end result as far as the color goes. I double edit it, which is probably why my picture comes out crisp because it's, it's getting double edited, you know what I mean? Uh, which means I'm double sharpening it, so we're sharpening it on Facetune, but then I also go back and do more sharpening on Visco. So yeah, it doesn't make my picture blurry or anything if you're wondering, sharpening. I feel like sharpening on Visco is a lot different from the Facetune sharpen. Facetune sharpen makes your picture look like it's coming out of a freaking 2014 Pixar edit, but this one is just like very sleek sharpen, you know what I'm saying? So. If anything, the answer to how I get my pictures so crisp is Visco Sharpen. I would 100% say that. I'm sure you guys pretty much get the gist of how I edit now. I'm not going to do the one in the car. We're going to go ahead and go straight into the mirror picture. Um, the mirror picture that's a body photo. I wanted to do this picture specifically because it is one of my most liked photos on Instagram. So I thought I would show you guys how I got that picture to look like what it is like right off that it's closer so before i even start editing this picture we're gonna go ahead and make it closer because we don't want this i have my ring light peeking on the side and whatnot we don't want any of that so yeah i'm gonna zoom this picture in heading straight to face tune mm -hmm. off bat when it comes to any picture I've ever taken in this location, I start with the ground. The carpet is not very flattering. It's not very flattering in photos. Granted, it doesn't look that bad in person, but in a photo, I want my carpet to look better than this. So I'm going to go to the patch tool, which I'm glad I'm using this picture because I'm using different effects that I use. All of these things I use all the time, it literally just depends on the photo. So like I said, I'm going to start with the carpet, but even before I start with the carpet, I want to go ahead and get this spot right here. And um, you go to vanish. I go to vanish mode. Sometimes I use patch. It depends on what I'm trying to erase, but I usually do vanish for things like this. So this right here, vanish, it's gone. This little mark right here, vanish, and it's gone to fix that right there. You guys are going to go look at my pictures and be like, wow, she really did take all this stuff out. No joke, this is what I do. Any marks, we're just going to take them away with vanish. Mm -hmm. Getting all of that gone. This picture, these photos were very time consuming to edit, as you can clearly see. After just kind of scrolling and not really pushing it back, 
this is what it's looking like. Closet door automatically looks a lot better. A lot of that stuff you couldn't even see now that I'm thinking about it. But we're just going to get it off just in case. So now to the floor. As you can see, many, many like little areas that I don't want to be there. So any like little dark of the carpet not being the same pattern, not very smooth. I'm gonna clean that up. As you guys can see, it looks so much better. Around here, gonna do that same thing. Come here and erase this harsh mark, which is which was created because of my mirror. So I do move my mirror in front of me when I'm taking pictures right here. I erased this whole thing because I didn't want it there. So, yep. Boom, and it's gone. Fix this right here also. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I would honestly say all of this is very self-explanatory. I kid you not, y'all do not have to do this to your picture if you don't want to do this to your picture. Okay, so this off bat, the carpet looks a lot better. Also, in the other picture, I erased my uh, outlet right here, so I'm going to do the same. I really erased this whole freaking cord no way my car yeah. hey make sure you get the shadow too did i get the shadow i kind of kept the shadow my car yeah. <laughs> my car yeah. and boom so that's what i'm gonna do that's where we're gonna stop it at because i could go all day with clearing up little blemishes so this is what we do so the carpet looks nice but it's still not that cute so <laughs> What I do is go to the paint tool and I go to, I kind of pick out, I do the picker, always do the picker. I don't just randomly decide to choose a color and we're going to make my thing that color. I try to find a color that's actually in the picture. I don't know, I feel like that would make the most sense for anyone. So then I go to the classic tool and I love the classic tool for this. It evens out the carpet so nicely. You can zoom in and really get in there, but the classic tool does its thing for this specific reason it evens out everything so nicely as you guys can see before after before that is crazy is it not zoom in get every little nook and cranny of your carpet to make sure it's all the same also go off because the classic tool can kind of rub off on your clothing also so just make sure you're only getting what you want to be classic but uh, this is crazy so they can kind of measure how much of it you want on here that kind of looks fake so we're gonna kind of about here about there is good it looks even nice and everything and so that's like literally what I do when it comes to my carpet this whole ordeal of what I just did is literally just up to you like I would not say you have to do this if you don't want to do this so yeah but I wanted to do it so what I do now is we're gonna go back to retouch and start what I would usually start but for a photo like this, the background had to be done before I did anything else. Like, the background needed to be where it needed to be. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. As you guys can see, my face looks so pretty right here. I love this. Obviously, we got to fix the smile lines. I literally, I have to every time. I did have a wig on right here, but it was given scalp to the maximus. But what I also like to do when I have a wig on is um use the heel tool if your lace is showing this is for the girls who wear lace and you ever like want to like make your lace look invisible the heel tool the heel tool literally takes any crustiness all that gets all that going for you girl and where is the lace nowhere you can't see it so yeah i'm gonna do that right here my burn all that good stuff just kind of fix all that up looks very nice and I'm also gonna hill tour under my eyes I always do that and I'm probably gonna bring some color under here because I feel like my eyes look kind of dark in this picture so we're gonna fix that when I go to the paint tool and so yeah smooth I'm really not gonna smooth too much under my eyes it's also it's like very smooth so I'm gonna also take this away I don't know what I did right here but I don't like it yeah, I need a little bit of shadow. Okay, so yeah, that's literally it for the face on this picture. So we're going to go to uh, white balance and we're going to make this picture more blue. Yeah, that's hard. That is, this is a hard picture. This is a very, very hard picture. Like, I'm not even going to hold you. So 
I yeah, I love this blue. I could definitely see why it looks better blue. So this is more orangey, but then you hit them with the blue, and it's just like yeah, 100%. And also, um, I'm gonna add a little, maybe like one saturation, and that is it. So this is the numbers for this picture. I've been using this first filter the entire time and that's what I do anytime like I'll just choose one and tweak it a bit because all of these filters I've used on a picture at some point and most of the times my pictures all look the same filter so I could use the same one and just tweak it a little bit and it'll literally be perfect for my feed every time so um yeah this is it like that is literally that's it so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope it was helpful i hope you guys found some tips some tricks take some notes in your notes app because that's what i do if you know me you know i put everything in my notes give this video a thumbs up comment down below what else y'all want to see because this one was like what else could y'all actually want to see at this point this was what y'all wanted to see subscribe to my channel for more videos Follow me on Instagram. I just gave you the secrets and you're not even going to follow me. Follow my Instagram, Mykaria Janae, M-I-K-A-R-I-A, J-A-N-A-E, Mykaria Janae on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter, Mykaria J, I believe. Follow me on TikTok, Mykaria Janae on there as well. Follow me on Pinterest at Mykaria J, I think. Let me check. On Pinterest, I am Mykaria Janae also actually. And yeah, that's, that's all the apps I have. So I will catch you guys in my next freaking video.